Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm happy to see so many of you to discuss tooltips today. Just before we start, let's see with a quick show of hands who has already used a Vizin tooltip ever in a dashboard. OK. <laughs> OK, so you're no beginners. Great, because this is an advanced session. All right, so I'll just introduce myself quickly so you know who I am. I'm a pure product of the Tableau public community. I started at Tableau four years ago on the Tableau public team. And most of the things that I've learned on Tableau Desktop, I've learned it from the community, from reading blog posts, from downloading and retro engineering workbooks. And so I'm going to give you an overview of all the crazy stuff that you can do with Vizin tooltips that came from the community. And I'll give credit when I do this. While I was on that great team, I had the chance to build some funny visits, like this uh, Candidate Cities to the Olympic Games one, or this one on French cheese. So as you can see, lots of them. There are more like than 200 varieties. And I even included a Vizin tooltip that showed the fat versus protein uh, ratio of all the cheeses. <laughs> Cheese lovers. Um, and um, as you can tell, I'm French. And I had the pleasure two years ago, I'm saying this because we, we're probably all still in the hype of Iron Viz yesterday. Two years ago here in Vegas, I was the proud sous viseur of uh, 2017 Iron Viz champion, Tristan Gilvin. Who liked the Iron Viz yesterday? Yeah? Cool. Okay, so to start with the, um, this session, I would like to quote uh, data visualization specialist, Stephen Few who says that fitting everything in without sacrificing meaning doesn't require muscles, it requires finesse. Of course, he's not talking about moving house or real estate here, he's talking about dashboarding. And I'd like to paraphrase him a little bit today by saying that it actually requires Vizin tooltip. Because this is the whole idea, right? You want to put more stuff in your dashboard without sacrifice, like giving more context, without uh, cluttering your dashboard. And this is exactly what we will do with Vizin tooltips. So by the end of this session, you will be able to give context without cluttering your viz. You will create effective interactions because this is what we're here for. I'm not just here to show you some crazy stuff that you will not be able to use uh, in a business context. And then uh, you, will, you should be confident in using Vizin tooltips more often because you will understand how it works in, in, in details. So the agenda of today is going to start easy. We'll go, we'll go over the basics so that everyone starts on the same ground. So bear with me if you think you're more advanced. Uh, this is just to make sure everyone can enjoy this session. Then we will see some advanced examples. So we'll combine parameters and set actions and Vizin tooltips, uh, that kind of fun stuff. Uh, then we'll do creative ideas that are, that are not necessarily complex, but things that you may not have thought of. And finally, we'll finish with the best practices, because Vizin tooltip has some performance impacts, and you want to be aware of that when you create Vizin tooltips. OK, sounds good? So let's start with the, the basics. What is a Vizin tooltip? And so how does it work? Vizin tooltip is not interactive, so this is never going to happen. If I click here, it's never going to give me another Vizin tooltip. You won't have Vizin tooltip in Vizin tooltip because Vizin tooltip is just a PNG. Next thing to know is that Vizin tooltip is associated with one mark. Even though we'll see that we've set actions, we can maybe uh, go around this a little bit. Um, and Vizin tooltip basically works like a filter action in the sense that it creates a link between two sheets, one source sheet and one target sheet, where the source sheet is filtering the target sheet, and this is triggered by user uh, action, so very close to a filter. Now, what's the workflow of rendering a Vizin tooltip for Tableau? First, Tableau will render the Uber tip so this is the default tooltip uh, with the, the text and the possibility to filter on a dimension. Then it will filter the target, the target sheet. It will look for a cached image to see if we already have something in store. And if we don't, then it will have to draw the visual uh, model and create that PNG. 
So this does have some, visual, uh, some performance implications. But let's, we'll, we'll see this at the, at the end. I want to show you the fun stuff and then, then remind you that uh, we need to uh, consider those things. So let's move to demo time. Still in the basics, I'll just remind you how you create a Vizin tooltip. So the data set we're going to use today is about Berlin crime data. We have this data at the level of the sub-district with the type of offense and year by year from 2012 to 2018. And the first easy Vizin tooltip I want to create is just to include this bar chart in uh, the Vizin tooltip of my map. So how do I do this? I go tooltip. I insert sheets, and I choose the sheet that I want to insert. And you see this is the markup of Vizin tooltip. This is what creates the Vizin tooltip. There are four parameters to this markup. The first one is the sheet name with a capital S. It's case sensitive. I don't think you would ever type it from scratch, but if you do, uh, it's a capital S. Uh, and it takes uh, the name of the sheet as the, the, part, the, the value, and it has to be between quotation marks. Next two parameters are about the size of the Vizin tooltip, so it's max width and max height, and the default setting is going to be 300. And the final parameter is filter, and this is just saying what is going to be passed as a filter from the source sheet to the target sheet. And by default, this is all fields. But of course, you can change it, and so we're going to see this. Um, so first, let's see, okay, let's see how it behaves right now. Okay, you see, so that's the default. And let's do a few experiments on this markup to see what happens. So the first experiment I'm going to do is to get rid of all fields. So when I do this, I'm basically saying that I don't want any filter action to happen. I'm, I'm getting rid of any field and I'm saying I just want the initial viz to show as such. And then I can also choose to include part of the fields to filter. So here, if you, if you look at my level of detail, you see that I have district and sub-district. And so I could decide not to go at the sub-district level, but just to stay at the district level. And so to do this, I'm just going to insert in the filter uh, part, district. It became really small. Uh, and now you see, let's stick to a, to a certain district. So this, those are in the same district. And you see that, indeed, I'm not filtering at the sub-district level anymore. I just uh, kind of fixed the, the filter. So going back to the, the default, I'm going to go all fields again. I'm going to change the max width so you see that can be done. And now we got a nice uh, Vizin tooltip, the one that we're going to keep. And uh, I, I really wanted to prove my point that a Vizin tooltip uh, is just a filter action, and I have a simple way of doing this. I'm going to, re to bring again my year sheet here in this dashboard below the map. You see that there is no uh, filter action happening at the level of the map here, it's clear. But yet, when I do hover over the map, the second sheet gets filtered. So this is just to help you remember that it's actually just a simple filter action that's happening. Okay. So you've got the basics. Uh, maybe one last experiment that you may want to do would just be to get rid of the width, the height, and the filter. And that would just bring you back to the default settings uh, because those are optional parts. Okay. So that's, uh, that was just to make sure everyone understands how to create a Vizin tooltip, what, you, what can you customize in the Vizin tooltip markup. And now we're going to start with the funny example, like with the interesting examples, fun examples. The first one I have for you is um, the possibility to change the Vizin tooltip that appears in your Vizin tooltip uh, based on a parameter. Here, 
I took uh, an example that would be if I'm the government of the city of Berlin and I, I make this dashboard available to both police officers and city officials, then they may have a different uh, interest in looking at certain things. So the police users, they might want to look at the type of crime and then the city officials, they might want to look at the evolution because what they want to say is that they want to tell to the citizens that they improved, uh, they, they control the crime in the city. So how am I going to do this? Let's see the two sheets that I want to uh, include uh, with this swap parameter. And let's check this parameter. It's just going to be a simple string uh, parameter. Like you see, it takes two values, the first one type of crime, the second evolution over time. That's pretty easy. And then what I want to do is to associate uh, one value of this parameter with one sheet and the other value with the other sheet. Um, this is something that you may not be used to doing, but it's really simple. So just look and be surprised that this, is, that this is actually possible in Tableau. I'm going to create a calculated field that says swap uh, viz, for instance. And then it's just going to be my parameter inside there nothing else and I'm going to bring this uh, swap viz field that just contains my parameter here in filter and I need to do this because I cannot bring directly my parameter as a filter so I have to use a calculated field as an intermediary um, moment and then I bring that calculated field in the, the filter and so I'm just going to tick type of crime here and this is basically going to associate this viz type of crime with the value of the parameter type of crime. And if I change the value, you will see that nothing, nothing appears on the viz. And then I can go to my other sheet, and this time I will associate evolution over time with this viz. So I'm just going to tick that cell, that box. And you see that when I select the other one, then it disappears. And so now you, you guess that what I'm going to do is just going to uh, go to my tooltip. And a uh, quick tip, you don't need to go back to the sheet when you want to edit a tooltip. You can just stay in your dashboard, uh, go worksheet in the menu, tooltip. And here I can edit my tooltip directly. And so I'm going to call my two sheets. So that one will be evolution over time. The second one will be type of crime. I can customize the markup a little bit to make them look nice. And now let's see if it works. So let's say evol evolution over time. Evolution over time gives me the, the bar chart uh, with the years, so that looks pretty good. Type of crime. Okay, works. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So if you were to think of a business example for that, it could be something like a dashboard showing you your leads. And uh, you would have both your salespeople and your marketing people looking at this dashboard. And your salespeople may want to see details about the lead contacts. And your marketing people may want to see uh, which campaign that lead came from. And then they could just swap with a simple parameter. So that was the first example. Um, let's see if you like the second one even better, because that one is even more uh, innovative in my view. So in this one, usually I, I tried to explain it with words, and then I just gave up and, and thought I should show you an example. Uh, so in this one, see what happens when I hover and when I click. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> easier with a, with a dashboard. Um, okay, so let's see how to do this. Um, but let's, let's think about it for a second. So what we, what we do here is that we have a conditional tooltip that appears, um, one tooltip appears when I click, and if I'm not clicking, I see another tooltip. So how do I do this? Um, I need to find a way to tell Tableau if one viz is selected uh, in, my, in my map. In, in if one mark is selected in my mark. And how am I going to do this? 
I will need to count the number of uh, districts here uh, and the number of marks across the whole viz. And if it's equal to one, then I want to show the zoomed in map. And if it's equal to zero or something else than one, then I want to show the normal tooltip. So this is going to be a Boolean at the end when I finish my calculation. And the calculation will look something like this. It's going to be a count, D, count distinct of the subdistrict or whatever marks uh, you want to count. And because I want to count all the ones that are present in my table across my, across my map, uh, it's, go it's going to be a table calculation, a window sum. So window sum of the count distinct of subdistrict. And as I told you, I want it to be a Boolean and I want it to be true when I select one mark only. So I'm going to say equals one. And it's here, uh, it moved to measures, but I, I'm not going to reuse it uh, directly. I'm not going to put it into a filter or marks. I'm just going to call it in another um, calculation, which is going to tell me what happens when it's true or false. And so basically when it's true, I will say that I want to see my zoomed map. And when it's false, I want to see the, the bar chart. And notice how I can bring the markup of the Vizin tooltip inside the calculation. And so because the markup in, is already inside my calculation, then I won't need to insert the sheet. I will just uh, insert the, this calculated field in my tooltip. And depending on what I select, uh, it will give me the right Vizin tooltip. So, that's my calculation. I bring it onto detail. And then I will call it in my tooltip. So, see, I'm not inserting a sheet, I'm just calling that calc. And let's see if it works. Hmm, disappointing. No, it doesn't work, sorry. <laughs> not there yet, not there yet, but thank you. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, why doesn't it work? Um, any idea? Yeah? Yes, great, correct. Because there is a table calculation, by default it will be calculated table across, but table across here would be across the longitude. And I actually want it to be computed across the, like with the subdistricts. So once I change it to subdistrict, it works. But don't clap too fast because it works, but not totally, right? Can you notice something? If I move across different marks, like this one should be very different to the rest, right? But they're all the same, and it's the same here, they're all the same. So why is that? Um, I told you that the markup gets passed via the calculated field um, uh, to create the Vizin tooltip, and this is true for the sheet name, uh, for the max width and the max height, but actually the filter parameter of my markup doesn't get passed. So this is uh, the way it's designed at the moment. Maybe it will evolve in the future, but this creates a bit of uh, challenges for us, uh, maybe frustration at the beginning, but, but most, uh, mostly challenges, and we will try to find a way around this. Um, so for the, for the clicking part, it should be quite easy because I can create an action that filters uh, based on my click. And actually there's already one that's been created here that I can just edit. Uh, sorry, not edit, but I, I can just apply it to my zoomed map. So I will do apply to worksheets, selected worksheets. And so this one I can easily apply it to my zoomed map. Let's try to apply it to types of, cri of crimes as well and see what happens. So first I'll try the zoomed map. It should work because it's a click action. Okay, perfect. Um, but it still doesn't work for my, uh, my types of crime for the same reason, it's a click action. Um, so Let's think about another type of action that could apply on hover and would help to filter on one subdistrict. Any idea? Anyone has done set sessions, set action sessions? Yeah? Okay. 
So with the with the set action, I can actually um, choose to do a hover, like to to trigger it on hover, and to have it populate a set that I could then use on my bar chart. So let's do just this. I will create a subdistrict set. Create set based on the subdistrict. I'm going to call it subdistrict. Um, select all the values for now, and OK. And this set, I will use it as a filter here. And because I included all the subdistricts in my set, it doesn't change for now. But now what I will do is to activate this set uh, with a set action. So I'm going back to my map. You can create the set actions both in the dashboard and in the worksheet. So here I'm going to do it at the worksheet level, action, add change set values action. Uh, it's going to populate my set subdistrict that we just created, and it's going to happen on hover. That's the important part. And when I clear the selection, I want to add all the values to my set. OK. And now let's see. So I think now you can clap. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so this, you might not see a direct use case for such a map, uh, even though I used to live in Mexico City at some point, and that would definitely be super useful in, in some places to know like what's the crime rate and, and what's, the limita like, what, what's the delimitation of the district so you stay away from the dangerous areas. Um, but there are plenty of business use cases where you could use this uh, idea. Because in general, when people just want um, an overview of something, they will hover. And then if they want more information, the natural behavior of, of humans is to go and click, right? So you could have general context and then click and give them a bit more uh, detail. OK, so that was the, third exa the second example. Uh, let's move into a third one. And remember uh, that a visit, supposed, uh, a visit tooltip is supposed to be associated with only one mark. Now with visit tooltip, we're going to be able to um, select multiple marks and impact our visit tooltip. So what I want to create here is to have this uh, type of crime uh, bar chart show in my visit tooltip. And I want to be able to know what's the percentage of the crimes that happened in the selected district. And luckily, I've already created a subdistrict set here. So I'm just going to bring it onto color. And so uh, the, the set is going to be in and or out. So if I select something, it's in the set. Otherwise, it's out. And this will help to say, um, this, this will do proportional brushing. And this will tell me what's the proportion of crime that happens in my subdistrict. So let's add a, a set action to this worksheet. Um, yeah, it's okay. I'm wait for a second. Yeah, I'm not on the right map. Okay, so this is the map that I want to use. Uh, I'm going to add my set action. It will populate my set subdistrict on select and. Let's see if it works. It works. <laughs> OK. So it works for one mark, which is uh, nice. But this I could have done without, uh, I, I could have done with a simple uh, Vizin tooltip. I'm just going to select one mark and then change the order, because it, it would be nicer if the blue was at the beginning of the bar. Uh, all right. OK, so it works with one mark. And now let's see how it behaves for several marks. OK, that's a bad example. Um, yeah, when you select several marks, you will, because you will populate the set with all the subdistricts that you selected, then uh, the Vizin tooltip will also represent that, and you will see the percentage that all the subdistricts you selected, uh, the percentage that they represent in terms of the total crimes. 
So Alexander Platz uh, will, because it's a very crime prone area, it's the center of the city, you will see that uh, it has quite a few. Uh, and on the opposite, if you want to live in Berlin in a safe side, I think you should go live there because if we select those areas, we barely see any, like they, they represent a very small percentage of the crimes in Berlin. Thank you. So that, that was a third example, uh, combining the set actions with the, the Vizin tooltip. Um, I'm sure you can, you can think of some applications in your, in your daily uh, life, business life. Um, and so, yeah, this first part was about technical examples where, where we would combine parameters with sets, with actions, uh, to create stuff that you probably didn't think were possible with Vizin Tooltip. Um, and in this second part, I'm going to go into more creative examples that are not necessarily very difficult to make, uh, but that you, yeah, you, you probably wouldn't think of it in the first place. Uh, you learn a couple of things as well, but uh, not, as, not as much uh, as, as you learned in the previous one, I would say. But stay tuned, it's, it's cool. <laughs> So for this example, I have a word cloud of the district, so we're not anymore at the sub-district level. And what I want to do is to create a sort of dashboard in my Vizin tooltip where, where I'm going to combine uh, the four sheets that follow. So this one, that one, which is the evolution uh, of crime over time. This one, which is the top 10 uh, types of crime. And this one, which is the top 10 sub-districts by crime. And all of this I want to combine inside my Vizin tooltip. I'm not saying it's necessarily best practice to have so much stuff in your Vizin tooltip, but that's, a, well, that's an experiment and they're not very um, uh, resource consuming Vizis either. Um, they don't have many marks, so let's try it. So first, um, remember that, oh, did I show you that row divider sheet, the empty sheet? You're probably wondering why do I want to include an empty sheet in my Vizin tooltip. Um, I'm, I'm going to show you, to show you just now. Uh, so let's insert that empty sheet here. Up, row divider. If I do a preview, it's just a, it's just a blank square. Useless, not interesting. Uh, but I called it row divider for a reason. Um, there's actually a neat little trick that's going to help you to create a row divider, and this is to set the, the height of this blank sheet to nine. And when I do this, it just creates a nice little line that's going to separate the content of my dashboard. So it's just, it's just formatting, uh, but you wouldn't have come, uh, like someone in the community came up with this idea, and I would probably not have come up with it uh, myself, but it's really nice. Uh, nine is the sweet spot, so you can try with other values, but uh, th this works the best, in my, in my opinion. And so I'm going to put the, the width to 500, because I know that I want to combine different stuff, and that's the, the width I want to give to my dashboard. And so then I wanted to bring in the evolution over time uh, line chart, so I'm going to do just that. Here. Let's see what it looks like. I'm going to make it 500 width. Uh, maybe make it a bit uh, tinier in terms of height. Okay, looks pretty good. Now I would like to get another row divider to give some, um, some space and some delimitations to my uh, dashboard. So let's try to get back to that row divider. And you see something. It's grayed out. So as soon as you've used one uh, sheet in your Vizin tooltip, you cannot reuse it. Can't you? <laughs> well, it's just text, so sorry, Tableau. I'm going to outsmart you. <laughs> yeah, and so now I have my two lines. So you could just uh, replicate. It. It's just an image, so it's just, it's just like copy-pasting the same image over and over again. Um, and the last part is that I want to put those two top tens next to each other. So I don't know if you've ever tried to put stuff next to each other in a tooltip. 
Um, but that's, that's not difficult, it's just that you need to know that it can be done. So I'm going to bring the two sheets on top of each other, like this. And then to make them appear next to each other, I just need to get rid of any space between them. And of course, because I want my dashboard to be uh, 500 um, pixel wide, I'm going to, sorry, change the width of each of those uh, charts to 250. Here we go. 250. And, and we get what we wanted. <laughs> Um, not, not exactly, right? Something seems weird. Any idea? I hear some things. Top 10, yeah, top 10. Okay, my top 10 seems to be happening uh, before my vision tooltip, and so this is messing up because I, um, yeah, if, if, the, if in my district there are not the, the top 10 sub-districts, well, if in my district there are no, not, ah, oh, how to explain that? Uh, did, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, basically some of my districts uh, don't have, uh, the, the, don't have uh, the sub-districts in the top 10, so they're not showing up. Um, and so what I will need to do is basically do something with the order of operations. And this is going to be as simple as adding this tooltip filter to the context. So I'm going to add it to the context in both of my top 10s so that it gets applied before my top 10 uh, uh, filter, which is just here below. And now, now it works. Now it's nice. All right, so anyone thinking to add some dashboards in their vision tooltips? Or that's just, yeah? <laughs> nice. Um, okay, my next example is something that comes from the community. Uh, that was an example from Jeffrey Schaeffer. Uh, he has the, he writes, writes the blog uh, Data Plus Science. And so he was really excited when Vision Tooltip came out, and he wrote not only one blog post, but two blog posts with 10 tips in each blog post. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, how can you come up with 20 ideas of how to use Vision Tooltip? Uh, yeah. So one of those uh, ideas was to create this nice chart that's a tree map that also shows the distribution of the values at the top and on the side. So it's a really helpful chart to see trends, seasonal trends. And so I'm just going to uh, deconstruct it with you by going into the markup. So let's see how we did it. So basically it's three sheets, that's what we can see here. And the sheets are just here, so my tree map is here, uh, my heat map is here, sorry. Um, then I have the top bar chart and then I have the, the side uh, bar chart. And you notice that he got rid of every um, formatting that could be disturbing. So it, it's just, uh, just the bars, no labels, no axes, nothing. And so let's rebuild it step by step. So the first thing that he did was to, of course, bring the top bar chart. So if I leave only the first markup, this is what I see. Then I'm going to add the second sheet. So then comes the, the heat map. And the third part is going to be the side, the right side uh, bar charts. And because it's stuck next to the previous one, uh, we're just going to leave no space. And because if you notice, there is the tags, the labels for the weekdays, uh, then we need to leave a little indent in the, in the max height. So this is why you see that the heat map was uh, with a height of 400 pixels, but the bar chart on the right is a max height of 380. So he, he took away 20 pixels so that it would account for the, the labels. And this gives you this brilliant, bar, uh, this brilliant um, I don't know the name of this chart, I don't think it has a chart, but this 
heat map with distribution on the sides. So great, great tip from Jeffrey Schaffer. And the last one I have for you is one of my favorites um, because I, uh, I used to present a session called uh, Visualizing Dense Data. And this one is all about visualizing dense, dense data. So um, it could be a scatter plot, it can be a map. Sometimes you have so many marks on your viz that you cannot read anything. You cannot get any insight, you cannot get any trends. And so uh, you need to find a way to make this uh, readable by, by your users. And this tip was actually created by Alan Eldridge, a former Tableau employee in Australia. He called it the Lupe, uh, the magnifier vis tool tip. And so the idea is that in my vision tooltip, I'm going to focus on a smaller part of my map and bring that as a zoom. So how am I going to do this? It's quite easy, actually. Uh, I just duplicate this map. It's the exact same map. And then to be able to zoom, I will round both the latitude and the longitude to uh, lower decimal values, so they are less precise, and it will allow me to zoom. So let's do this. Create calculated field. I'm going to create the R, the rounded latitude. So it's round latitude. I'm going to round it up to two decimals. I will do the same with the longitude. And I will make them dimensions. So now I just need to bring them in the details for both of my maps. And uh, let's create that vision tooltip. So the vision tooltip will just call the other map, uh, which is exactly the same but with slightly bigger dots. And And the only thing that we need to change is uh, the, the filter, because if I keep it like this, it will filter at the zip level, and so it will just show me one point at a time, which is not interesting. So this time, I will filter it at the R lat and R long level. So I put them on detail, so I can just call them here as fields in my filter. Up. And now when I do this, see? <laughs> I really like that one. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but one thing you probably noticed with this trick is that it's pretty slow to load the maps. You saw we had to wait a little bit. We weren't sure it was working. And this is uh, because of performance issues. So this is a perfect transition for me to move back to the PowerPoint and to tell you a little bit about performance with Vizin Tooltip. So we saw cool stuff, and I could just let you leave and, and implement them, but I don't want to, to lie to you. Uh, there are some performance implications to using these in tooltips. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the, the design considerations and uh, the do's and don'ts. So first thing is that uh, continuous axes will scale pretty well in these in tooltips. So you can use them uh, without fear, uh, but there is a lower limit at 200 pixels. So if you go below 200 pixels, then uh, your axis might, try to, might, might start to be difficult to read and, uh, and look ugly. Discrete axes, on the, other, on the other hand, do not scale, so try to avoid those. Uh, and text also does not scale really well, so it will not... Um, it will not fit within the, the dimensions that you specify, within the, within the max width that you specify. So a consequence of the previous two points, the fact that you shouldn't use discrete and text um, is obviously um, indicating that you shouldn't use lengthy text tables in your vision tooltips. I, I'm sure no one wanted to use text tables in vision tooltips, uh, but just as a reminder. And uh, if you need to set the width 
or, or end the height of your Vizin tooltip to more than 600 pixels, then you should probably reconsider using, uh, using that chart in the Vizin tooltip because that's probably too big and it's going to cover the dashboard and so that's, that's not what a Vizin tooltip is made for. Now let's talk a little bit more about performance. There are two different uh, aspects of performance that you need to consider when you use Vizin tooltip. The first one is the query performance, so how long does it take to retrieve the data? And the second one is the rasterization performance, so how long does it take to actually draw the PNG? And so, of course, Vizin tooltip takes advantage of all the caching systems in Tableau. Um, but sometimes, if you are connected live to your database, or if, it's, if you know that it's the data querying that's taking a long time, then you can use a little dirty pre-caching trick that I'm going to show you. So, <laughs> you will see it's not very elegant, but sometimes it can help. So let's go back to this map. And let's say I want to use uh, this data uh, so it's the evolution of crime uh, year by year, and I, I want to use it uh, as a line chart uh, in my Vizin tooltip. And I'm having a really bad uh, query performance. Uh, I'm having delays with my queries. So what would I do then? <laughs> it's, uh, it's really ugly, but, uh, but it works. So I'm going to add the subdistricts to my uh, Vizin tooltip. It doesn't matter, right? Because then the Vizin tooltip will filter at the level of the district, so I will never see all of the lines. So whether I use the, the full value uh, without subdistrict on detail or whether I add the subdistricts will not impact my Vizin tooltip. What it will impact is that uh, then it means that I have my full uh, data table containing all the values that I need. And so this is when it gets really dirty. <laughs> I'm going to bring this, uh, this um, visualization, the one that I want to use in my Vizin tooltip. I will float it, bring it onto my dashboard, make it really small, like one pixel by one pixel. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, yeah, uh, and so now it means that every time I load, like the first time I load my dashboard, it will also load all the data behind. And so when I have to create my tooltip, uh, at least I'm bypassing the query uh, delay issue. There's still the rasterization, but the data is here. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I feel a little bad to, for sharing this, uh, this nasty tip with you, but sometimes it will help you. <laughs> So that was the first one, the, the query performance. Uh, the second one is the rasterization performance. So how long does it take you to draw your PNG? And so in this case, there's not much you can do except for making your viz smaller uh, and reducing the number of vises in your, in your tooltip. So if, if the dashboard in tooltip approach doesn't really work, uh, then uh, yeah, uh, yeah. That, that's the reason why the dashboard in tooltip uh, will, will not really work all the time. Uh, you need to have uh, not too many marks in your, in your visits. Um, so next, a little bit about the caching. Um, of course, the marks that you've previously uh, hovered over will be cached, so the PNG will already have been generated by Tableau. That's a good news. Um, it means that uh, there's no, yeah, it, it will be uh, almost instantaneous. Uh, one thing that you need to know is we cache on server only. Desktop doesn't cache, uh, but desktop usually gives a pretty good performance for a Vizin tooltip. Um, and then two things, server cache is invalidated on data refresh, of course, and it's also uh, personal to users, it's per user. So it doesn't, uh, it doesn't make sense to come in the morning and try to hover over all the marks so that the cache gets generated. It won't be shared across all of your users. Um, and so if you think a bit about what a Vizin tooltip is, uh, it's really about the responsiveness because People might not even notice if they don't get a, a tooltip appearing within two seconds or, or, yeah, within two seconds. They might just think that there is nothing and they might move on to the next dashboard. 
Um, so you really want the, the tooltip to be almost responsive, so there's no exact definition about what responsive is, but we like to say that uh, one second is, like below one second is the best, below two seconds is borderline okay, and anything higher than two seconds, just don't bother to create tooltips because no one will see them. And so if you're having this uh, over two second problem, then you should try the following tricks. Uh, so the dirty pre-caching trick that I shared with you just now. Uh, second one, uh, so this is in order of uh, recommendation. So the second one would be to reduce the complexity of your viz. Uh, so go to uh, reduce the level of detail, simplify the vizes, try to aggregate, group, um, do whatever you can so you have less marks on your, on your graph. Um, third one would be to reduce the number of visits if you created the dashboard in, in the tooltip. And finally, it would be to reduce the size of the viz because the rasterization is faster if the viz is smaller. So with this, I've created a nice summary slide for you to take away, uh, something that you can print and put on your desk to remind you of all the cool stuff that we saw today. So it looks something like this. I, I like to do this for my sessions. So yeah, you just print it, stick it on your desk, uh, think about it, and then try to see how you could apply some of this in your day-to-day -day work. So at the top, you see uh, the, the markup, the standard one and the customizable one. And then you see the, the six examples that we uh, reviewed today. And so I really hope that you can find an uh, application for at least one of those examples when you go back to the office. Thank you. Now, uh, I just would like to thank uh, our, our community because the super ideas that they came up with when the, this uh, feature launch were really crazy. So Jeffrey Schaffer, Matt Chambers is the one, I'm sorry, I didn't mention it, but he's the, the crazy person who invented that click versus hover trick. So big, uh, big kudos to Matt Chambers and the other ones that I've mentioned. And so please, if you like this session, complete the, the survey. And if you want more things like this, uh, there are two sessions that I can recommend you. One, the, I'm sorry, they're both at the same time though, but the first one, <laughs> you'll have to choose. They're both intermediate. One is about um, adding context to engage your audience. They will talk about um, Vizin tooltip, about adding descriptions, uh, labels, etc. And the second one is raise the bar with the latest dashboard objects. And this will include the show hide um, dashboard, which could be used as an alternative to uh, Vizin tooltip. So you know now you can bring in a container, decide to show it or hide it. And this also allows you to declutter your visualization and save some uh, real estate uh, for your dashboards. So thank you very much. If you have questions, I'll be here. Thank you, and go use some Vizin tooltips in your, in your dashboards. <laughs>